So we'll start today by just talking about democratization. And so the, the panel is about democratizing AI. And Beth talked about trust, alignment with no, no, business and skills. Um, but I'd love to get everybody's perspective on what does democratizing AI mean? What does it mean to you and your organizations? Who wants to start with that? Well, I can. Okay. I can go for a second. Uh, Daniela Braga, I'm the founder and CEO of the Find Crowd. Uh, the Find Crowd is a data uh, platform uh, that allows uh, uh, data scientists and not only data scientists to collect, structure, and clean high quality, high quality training data at scale to train machine learning and AI. Um, Democratizing AI, in my opinion, is very much in the lines that Beth defined. Uh, it's creating tools to allow uh, people that are not necessarily uh, PhDs, and obviously we cannot expect that to be the case, to uh, take uh, their AI uh, development in their hands and not really having. So it's, it's tool suites and you know IBM and Google and Amazon and Microsoft uh, are all going that route of providing uh, technologies for that. There's a bunch of startups doing that that usually get acquired immediately. Um, and, and that's, but what is not uh, happening yet is, is still, uh, I think most of the industry verticals still don't understand how can they benefit from that. So that's another level. Society and the governments together to come up with those guidelines. In right now, especially beyond the technology providers, there's the that the ver industry verticals and industry by industry. Most most uh, spec designers, let's put it this way, this way of the of the new models are male because the technology is. I mean, there's there's very few women represented in the technology space, even less in the AI space. Obviously, when you're coming up with a new model, it's one person uh, coming up with, with a completely uh, uh, non-intentionally uh, malicious, but it comes with their one single vision of how the, the, the algorithm should behave. Um, and of course, the data is also not never, by, never neutral, absolutely, but if there's, there are best practices that most of the times the scientists don't even know necessarily because they are focused on the best algorithms and, and not so much on how the data goes into that and how you should organize data and how you should balance that data. So I think it's a collective effort that we're still very far away from uh, of education and guidelines to for every single industry and they, and, and really not PhDs but diversified visions, UX experience, and having the people, the crowd, which obviously is kind of the title of what we do at the fact crowd, to test uh, and bring others, other visions and other angles to those models before they go out and they behave poorly. One of the other things that I wanted to touch on is um, going back to the data. You know, so there are those who say algorithms are biased, data is biased. Um, and we know that companies have a lot of data, but 
but if their company data, like these some of the examples that you gave, if, if you know I'm a woman and I don't get a mortgage because previously all the loans were given to men, how do we mitigate against those kinds of, of biases? Um, so one of the questions that I've been asking of myself and others lately is where where do we go um, to complement data that we might have, or are there ways in which we can recognize that potential data and mitigate against the effects of applying algorithm to what we know is inherently biased data. So maybe we can talk a little bit, Ben, if you want to talk about Absolutely. how Crowd is a way of creating We have a model, so we at Define Crowd would be able to solve the mortgage problem there. Uh, because we <laughs> because we focus on another segment, which is a which is a, a big $190 billion market uh, that handles uh, human computer interaction. So everything that has to do with the, well, so the content moderation, which is a big deal, like the uh, searches that uh, suggest child pornography need to be cut or not, and not suggested. There's a whole data problem around that, or racism, or and brand tech ads. So there's so many things around that, right? Uh, so we handle the, the, lang the linguistic side, which is super complex. Like human language is very difficult, and we have so many languages in the world. We have the vision side and the combination of all these modalities. With us uh, in that area, uh, we are able to uh, target with our crowdsourcing model combined with machine learning that controls quality across the, that, the segments of the models that are uh, lacking the, the representation of that kind of data. So in a similar model, it wouldn't be the mortgage of women, right? But if we have cases in TV broadcasters in the United States that have a hard time understanding Afro-Americans. And that's a, a data problem uh, of representation of dialectal uh, representation of, of those uh, uh, segments of the population that only can be resolved with a direct data collection and, and processing of that and, and, and making sure that we also can, uh, through the same platform test models, in a uh, you know, continuous way. So uh, I think it works across the board. It's really how we can help in that case. 